So welcome to my top 10 NES games, regular Nintendo games, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. I was there. I was there when it was first out. I went to a friend's place and he's like, do you want to play on my Nintendo? And I'm like, Nintendo? And I'm like, what kind of word is that? That's so strange. And I had no idea it was a Japanese company and they were bringing out all the arcade games and some RPGs and action RPGs to the home console right after the big video game crash. And I was excited. I was like, oh my god, look at these graphics, the gameplay. Super fun, super fun. Before I get into the top 10 list, some honorable mentions. And I gotta say, remember one thing guys, this is just my top 10 list. These are games I'm nostalgic about, they're games I finished, the games I love to death. There's no official list out there. I would like to hear your list as well because your list is equally as important. This is just my personal opinion and me having a bit of fun today. So my honorable mentions, because oh my God, all these games had to be in here plus a whole bunch of others. Um, but anyways, we'll start. Star Tropics. This was a wonderful action RPG that we're still waiting for a true sequel to. There was number two, but we're looking for number three. And I don't think we'll ever, ever get that. Uh, Rygar. This is one that a lot of people seem to pass up in their top 10 list. It was hovering there for me. I really enjoyed this. I used to play it all the time at my friend Andrew's place. Or should I say, I used to watch him play it all the time. And this is a great action platforming game. Wonderful stuff. Great soundtrack. Strider by Capcom. I was playing the arcade game and this was another game that came out and I was like, Strider at home? Okay, I'll give it a shot. And I really like this game. This is another overlooked game, I think, and really good action game. Okay, m one of my favorites, and I know my friend Rob's, uh, one of his personal favorites, and that is Blaster Master. This is a, a great game where you jump in a tank and go into the underground and because you're following your frog that uh, escaped your pet frog, and you can jump out of your tank and then you can do overhead missions as well. Very cool stuff in here. Highly recommend Blast Master if you've never heard of it. Okay, uh, Bionic Commando. This is a wondrous game uh, where you play as a, a commando with one arm and you're taking on the Nazis. Yes, they don't honestly say that in the American version, but it is. You blow up Hitler in the end. You shoot him in the head and make his head explode. It's wondrous stuff. Okay. This game was very close to being in there, and it should be in here. It should honestly be in here, but there's 10 slots. There's only so much I can pick. Super Mario 2. I'll never forget getting this at the Christmas of 1988, and it was wonderful. I, I loved Mario already, but to get Mario 2 in this whole brand new world, the graphics were outstanding. I just remember playing it all Christmas and for months afterwards. If not years, I'm still playing it now. Okay, if you ever went to get pizza back in the day, there was always one of these machines tucked in the back. It was an arcade machine for Double Dragon, a side view beat em up style game. And that's Double Dragon right here on the NES. They ported it and this was a huge game. Every single person, kid in my neighborhood who had an NES had Double Dragon. It was good. This is a this is a fun conversion. It's a bit of a cheap style game at times, but classic. Okay, got those out of the way. I have at least another 10 games that should be in this list. It's very difficult. At number 10, we're going to start here. At number 10, I couldn't find the cartridge because there's a cartridge to this. And that is for the original, and this had to be in the list, the original Super Mario Brothers. Yes, this is the game that all the kids in my street were playing and I went down the road and I was like, well, what is this, Mario? This is strange, like an Italian plumber in this weird world with these pipes and weird creatures. I thought the creatures that were walking uh, along the ground were ducks. I, I had no idea what this was when I first saw it, but I liked the idea of all the different secrets in the level and how difficult it was. Uh, the first levels were kind of easy. But it was strange, it was the first game I ever played with a D-pad and I would be falling down holes to begin with. I had a hard time playing the game, but I'll never forget finishing the game. And I t I've explained this story before, this is what made me become the video gamer I am today. My dad was watching me play it at the time, and this is like in 1987. 
and I finished the game and it was like so euphoric I can't even explain it. It was just an amazing feeling at the time and I turned to my dad and I'm like, oh, what do I do now? And he's like, oh, he goes, you get another game. And that tradition has been happening since that moment of nearly 30 plus years ago now. And uh, Mario is a classic, Mario 1, and that's why it had to be in the list. Okay, it was 1988. I remember it was the summer, just before I went into grade 8. And that was kind of a scary proposition at the time. And I would escape over to my friend Jeff's place. And he was another guy who had everything. His it sounds horrible to say, but his parents were divorced. And his dad was just showering him with stuff. I mean, so he had like 30, you know, NES games plus, And I was like, oh my god, I think I had one or two. And so I went over there. And I discovered all the old NES games back then. Nintendo Power, all of that stuff. Uh, but the one thing that I did discover was... Contra. And it's this action, run and gun style of game. They can play two player. The Konami code got introduced there, which we all loved. And I just love the jungle environments. I love the, me the mechanical aspects of it. And I love the alien aspects of this game. There was, there was quite a lot there. But number one, the gameplay was fun, responsive. You're always swearing at your friend if they died. It was a great action game and uh, one that I highly, highly recommend for anyone out there, for sure. Now, at number eight is a game that I love and I remember when I first came onto YouTube, I saw the Angry Video Game Nerd talking about this game. It was one of his first reviews and he was bashing on it and I was like, no, why are you bashing on my one of my favorite games on the NES? And then obviously I get to realize that James is doing a parody and uh, just having a bit of fun. But at first when you saw the Angry Video Game Nerd back then, you thought he was being serious. And uh, maybe he still doesn't like the game, but I like this game. Uh, my friend Andrew really likes this game. And that is Castlevania II Simon's Quest. This game was like an action RPG, and I liked RPGs, so I liked those style of, uh, you know, uh, bits in the game. I also liked the day and night system, I liked the graphics, I, I, thought, it, I thought it was very haunting, and especially with the music and the, the gameplay, and just fighting all the different gothic style of enemies, it was pure Dracula action. And I loved this. This was kind of like uh, Ravenloft uh, for me at the time because I, I really enjoyed Ravenloft. There's a Dungeons and Dragons module. And so I fit into this game really well. I like the other Castlevania games, uh, but I've always really liked Simon's Quest on the NES and you know, obviously Castlevania Symphony of the Night as well. At number seven is a game I do not own, but every kid in my neighborhood owned it and they always lent it to me. Maybe they felt sorry for me. That's okay, because I took it back then. and. <laughs> I played this all of the time, and it's my favorite Mega Man game of all time, and that is Mega Man 2. I'm no good at any of the other games. I found Mega Man 2 was easy enough on me that I could learn how to play it, and I got better the more I played it, and it wasn't as grueling as some of the earlier ones. That first game was insane. But Mega Man 2, the difficulty was just right for me, and it's the only Mega Man game besides X uh, that I've ever finished. And uh, I I just like the music, I like the different bosses. That to me is classic Mega Man, like it is for a lot of you out there. I think a lot of us grew up with Mega Man 2. And Mega Man 2 was, it seemed to be very easily accessible in the sense that everybody had it. I don't know, you know, anyways. Number six is a game that I, over the years, I should slap myself for not talking about more. And it's one that me and Andrew loved to death back in like 1989, 1990, played it all the time, all the time, and it's up there because everybody always talks about Zelda being the best action RPG on the, you know, action RPG uh, on the NES, but there was another, there was another, and it was a great one, and this is, oh my god, please forgive my box, uh, Crystallis, Crystallis right here by SNK. And this has come out on the SNK collection, which is really nice, a really nice way to play it. But this is a, I, I, you know me, I don't like to say hidden gems or anything like that, but this is a definite hidden treasure on the NES. And it's a wonderful, wonderful game. You wake up uh, after being asleep for a long time and it's an action RPG with lots of dungeons, monsters, and I just kind of like the world setting. Love the music, still listen to it to this day. Even on the NES uh, collection, I found myself listening to that music over and over and over again. Wow, 
This next one is a great one. Me and Andrew, on two separate family vacations, we live in Canada, we both drove to Reno, Nevada, separately with our families, as they say. Can you believe this? We were there the same week, we ended up at the same Toys R Us, we didn't see each other. This is before the, you know, uh, the internet, so we couldn't talk to each other, or talk to each other on cell phones, or text each other. We talked about it when we got back, because he had it, and I had it, the same Toys R Us we bought it from. In Reno, Final Fantasy 1. The first Final Fantasy, this is the beginning. I gotta say, the reason why I like doing some of these lists, I was, it's kind of cool. I was right there when all this stuff started. You know, it was so cool. Now we're on, you know, Final Fantasy 15 at present moment. But I was there to play the very first game. And this game wasn't just a good RPG. It was an excellent RPG. This was a game I was playing when I had a Genesis. And this beat some of the Genesis games. This, that's how well this game was holding up. And I like the, the party system, I like the side view combat, I like the world setting, I liked, I just liked every single thing about it. I liked how you could manage your party. Wonderful stuff, great music, wonderful music. Tears, when I think, uh, when I listen to this music, it takes me back to that summer, you know, talking with Angie down the street and we'd be trading secrets about how to get through the game. Both finished it, it was great stuff. Now, a game that had a lot of hype for me one that I was reading about for a very long time, and people were talking that in Japan, people were getting bullied for their copies when this game got released. Uh, people, you know, kids were walking away from buying the game, and then bullies were coming up bullying them and stealing the game. It was a phenomena in Japan, and it never quite took off uh, over here like Nintendo was hoping it would, because uh, the name was changed to Dragon Warrior 4 when it was released here. This is up there as one of the best RPGs on the NES. The best by far. And you play as many different characters, you all come together in the end to defeat a common evil. Uh, there was something, this was probably, which it was at the time, I'm, I'm still thinking back uh, what it was like back then, this was the best Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest game at that time. And I played Dragon Warrior 1, and you're a single player character, and this game you have more characters, and you have a wagon that you can bring with you, and just the monsters, and just the music, and the world setting. This was the best of the best back then, and still holds up as one of the best uh, Dragon Quest games for me, nostalgically, pure nostalgia, but uh, I love this game a heck of a lot. And uh, there's a great DS version of it if you're, you know, you want to play a, a more modern version of it, for say, so. Oh no, we're in the top three. We're in the top three, and if I haven't mentioned them yet, you probably know they're coming, and they, they're definitely coming. Uh, that is, the first one we're going to say here, for number three, is Zelda 2. Zelda 2 was a huge game, and I was a big RPG action fan. So this game was perfect for me. I loved the very first uh, Legend of Zelda game. Um, so when I found out there was a sequel, I was in, but I was like, oh, weird, why is it side view? And I must admit at first, I was kind of like, oh, I like the original overhead graphics and stuff like that, but I warmed into this game quite well. I didn't warm into the difficulty. This game, I think it honestly took me a few years to finish. Frustrating against the, you know, the battle with Shadow Link in the end. Oh my God. This game killed me. It really did. It was difficult. And you know, it's funny. I went back a few years ago and started playing this and I, I didn't find it as hard anymore. I didn't find it as difficult as when I did, you know, I played it in like, what was it, like 1989 or something like that. Uh, this game was difficult back then, but uh, I love it. Uh, this is a true classic on the NES, a marvelous game. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get a remake of this one day. Wouldn't that be strange? Okay, there was a battle for number one, but I've said what my number one NES game is before, and I stick with it. I stick with it. But at number two, it's gotten uh, bumped to number two, and that is The Legend of Zelda. These gold cartridges were amazing back then. I remember seeing them up on the shelves and I was like, oh my god, that has a gold cartridge? And I remember me and my friend Andrew went down to our friend Mike's uh, place uh, down the road and he had this and we took it out and had a gold cartridge. We were like, whoa, that's crazy. And we started playing the game and I said it before, I had no idea how to play this game. I'm like, what? Does this have levels? What is this? Is this an overhead game? What? I don't get it. There's different screens? I didn't understand it. 
And uh, Andrew did, and he he boarded up Mike and you know went off and played the heck out of it. And then he got his own copy of Christmas. And then I went to my friend's, um, you know, uh, Jeff again. I went over to his place and I watched him play it. And he had the Nintendo Player's Guide. And I was like flipping through it, and I was starting to understand what this was. And I was just getting into Dungeons and Dragons, so this was like, oh my god, it's kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons style of game, but it's action, and but it does have role-playing game elements, and <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, I've talked about this game a lot over the years. It's an incredible action RPG, and one that every player out there, young or old, should invest some time into and see what it was about. This game still holds up incredibly well. I was playing it in the summertime and I was like, God damn it. In one sitting, I just got through nearly all the dungeons. Had a great, great time. Drum roll, please. We need a drum roll because it's the number one, to me, NES game of all time. And I just have to say that I had played the first two games in the series and I quite like them a lot. And then I went to my local mall and we weren't getting this game for quite a few months, quite a few months. I went into this mall and there was this like little Japanese setup of these, uh, you know, games. And it said, Fam Famicom games, Famicom games. I'm like, what is this? Famicom, what the heck is this? I couldn't even read the title, I didn't get it. I'm like, Famicom, I'm like, oh, this must be the NES in Japan. And they had a copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 with a converter and it was $99, it was expensive. And I was like, oh, my hands were shaking. I'm like, hopefully, hopefully this works. Hopefully this works. And I got Super Mario 3 and this converter. And I brought it home and I started playing it. I was the coolest kid in the neighborhood. It was a big, big deal to have the next Super Mario Brothers back then before anybody else. But this is before the internet, I can't stress that enough. So everybody was over at my house. People knocking on the door, trying to bribe me to play it, and I was going, get out of here! You know, with a broom or something, it's pretty good. This was amazing. The only problem was the converter wasn't perfect. So I remember getting all the way to the last uh, dungeon in the game, uh, the last levels, and it would freeze on me, and I was like, what the fuck? I was so, I used to lose my shit all, because there's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could do. So I had that frustration, but yet I was able to play the game early. Super Mario Bros. 3, I was finally able to get a copy when it came out over here. And let me just say, this is the best NES game to me for nostalgia, for graphics, for gameplay, for music, for all of that, and then some. This game should be like floating above us all. It is a heavenly game. It's a game that is perfect to me. It's an 11 out of 10 game. The level designs, the, the different things that you can do in the, each level, the boots, the... I mean, there's so much to talk about. You know, the flying, the raccoon suit. I mean, it's perfection. The dungeons, the castles, everything to me made for a perfect game. And coming off 1 and 2, uh, Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot because this game was better than both of those put together. And that's saying something because I love those games to death. So to play Super Mario Bros. 3 was incredible. Like, I was like, oh my god, like this is amazing. And to get it early was really cool. I got a lot of fond memories of being a cool kid in the neighborhood. And then the movie The Wizard came out and they really unveiled it and everybody's going, oh my god. And uh, it was Super Mario Brothers Fever at that time and every, everybody had a copy of this. Everybody did. And it was also a game that you played over and over and over again and you got better at and better at and better at. And, uh, you know, I can still pick it up to this day and go right to the end of the game, no problem. Because I played it that much and because I love it that much. So, guys, that is my top 10 NES games of all time. It's, it was a difficult list to make, a very enjoyable list uh, to make, and so much fun visiting the past again. So, anyways, guys, until next time.